Marvel Spider-Man got a new coat of paint to it, even though it's only been out for two years, and the only way to play it is to buy the Ultimate Edition for Mars Morales on the PS5. Now playing the game, you won't notice any differences. Not a single one. There's nothing here that's been dramatically changed in the slightest. All units, level 4 mobilization. Location, Fisk Tower. Fisk? Identify yourself! Who the f*** are you? I mean, I guess if you have a keen eye, you may notice that the face model for Peter Parker is different. And when I first saw the reveal for this a while back, I was one of those people in their rooms throwing tantrums. I'll admit it. I hate change at the best of time. But I'll also be the first to admit that after seeing it in action in Mars Morales and in this game, I've grown to actually really like it. I think that quite a few scenes benefit to the more naturalistic reactions that the new Peter face portrays. In my original video talking about the PS4 version, I didn't really take the time to talk about the actual game. Instead, I spent the whole time saying generic things like, But this game really makes you feel like you're Spider-Man. Which, you know, it does. Nothing's changed here. The swing is just as fulfilling and somewhat therapeutic, as it's full of the exaggerated swagger of an average white dude. But now I can't help but to compare it to its spin-off counterpart. The setting itself looks a little bland compared to Mars Morales, and that's probably due to Mars' game being covered in snow, which helped it pop for me. I also feel like whilst comparing the two, the character of Mars feels more fluid and light on his feet, whilst Peter seems like his punches hit harder but has less flourish to his movement. I did however think the story here still beats Mars's, only due to the fact that it's longer, well paced, and there are way more villains. Now. Even though I've said that, I do think that this game would have benefited with more villains, or at least more boss battles spread throughout the game. There's only one villain you get to fight other than Mr. Negative for the first two thirds of the game. It wasn't until the build up of the game until they introduced the Sinister Six. It's like the writers were finishing up the script and sat at the table like... I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. Don't get me wrong, I love the boss fights against the Sinister Six. I actually think the fight between Electro and Vulture was one of the best parts of the game, but personally, I think they could have spread the boss fights a bit better throughout the game. And I know there's also side villains like Taskmaster and Tombstone, but due to there being an overload of side content, they all get a little bit drowned out. I know you! You were on my neighbor's porch for Halloween! The name's Taskmaster, and you're about to get taken to school. And speaking of side content, there is so much here, and when you've really done it all on the original version, it just feels like an absolute chore doing it again. Because if you want the Platinum Trophy, you need to do every hideout, every Taskmaster challenge, every Black Cat perch, every research station, every laboratory puzzle, every police scanner, every backpack, taking all the photos. It just felt like the list didn't end. And don't even get me started on swinging around for hours waiting for crime to pop up so that I can stop him, because I forgot just how boring and time consuming that was. I think the only two side bits I actually really enjoyed was the research stations and catching pigeons. I don't know what it is about them. I think it's because I didn't find them all that repetitive, especially the research stations, because there's no two that are the same. Now after 100%ing the whole map, you'll have a couple things left on your list to tick off. None of them are all that difficult, like perching yourself on Avengers Tower and visiting Uncle Ben's grave. But the one trophy I was a little bit worried about going into was collecting all the costumes. Only because since initial release, there have been three DLCs, all with their own costumes that can be unlocked, and I saw that there were blacked out boxes for them. Luckily, I read the trophy completely wrong, and it actually says all the costumes that you can purchase. Which means you don't even need half the costumes that are actually on the list, just the ones you can buy. And quickly, speaking of costumes, I really like the new ones that have been added for the base game since its first release, and I'm also a big fan of the PS5 exclusive costumes, especially the Armored Advanced suit, which was the one that I used the most in my playthrough. It's nice to see as well that after all the nagging Sam Raimi fans sent to Insomniac Games, they finally added the Tobey Maguire suit. This is for you. And yeah, Andrew Garfield's suit got added into the game as well, but more importantly, Tobey Maguire's suit got added into the game. Overall, I still love the story and I think the characters are well done, however, it being a remaster doesn't really add much to what we already have. Apart from the face change, you probably won't recognise much differences unless you stuck both versions side by side and then you may be able to appreciate it. Of course, if you haven't played this game before, I would recommend you play this version. It is visibly the most superior version to play as it can run 4K and 60fps and can also support ray tracing. And as far as getting the Platinum Trophy goes, it took me 21 hours according to my PlayStation and it's just as easy as you remember it. But the grindy and repetitive stuff seems so much more apparent this time around. And if this is your first time playing the game, you'll find yourself having a good time with a very straightforward and easy Platinum Trophy. I'm aware as well that you can do something with your save data from the first game, in which if you have the Platinum Trophy for the PS4 version, then you can automatically get all the trophies for the PS5 version. But... I'll never make Platinum that way. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Plus, I just want to play the game again. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Wow, this game really does make you feel like you're Spider-Man.